So here's an arm embed reference design smartwatch using a memory LCD. And uh, can you show some of it? So it has a smooth UI. What is it? What is a? This is running embed. This is running embed OS. Yes. So what can embed OS do? So embed OS is uh, showing the um, the low power features. So in um, uh, embed OS is for Cortex M class processors. And, so which um, Cortex M is in here? So uh, we have what we have in here, which is the, the board which we have inside. This is the first version of the board. We have the second version, but we are still working on it. So the main process is Cortex M3 from uh, Site Labs, which is the Giant Gecko. Just that one. All right. So there's a Cortex M3 in there. Yes, we also have Cortex M0, which is in the Bluetooth chip. Just that one. So one Cortex M3 and one Cortex M0. Yes, we also have a fingerprint sensor, as you can see in here. Still working on it, and it has the coprocessor, which is Cortex M4. So there's also a Cortex M4 there. So there's three Cortex M inside there. Yes. And uh, what kind of sensors are going on inside? So what we have in terms of radios, we have uh, GPS, we have uh, Bluetooth, we have NFC, uh, we have 9-axis sensor, which is the accelerometer, gyroscope and magnetometer, we have ambient light sensor, we have RGB, uh, we have capacitive sliders. So Where is the you, capacitive? As, as you can see, the, uh, the sliders are in here, the capacitive buttons are in here. So as I as I go through the menu, I'm using the capacitive slider, and then we have a back button in here. Back and the, yeah, we have the user button which is in here as well. So that's what does the user button do? Information and uh, like OK. Menu. Yes. All right, and. Uh, can we look at the battery module there? Yeah. We, so what, yeah. what we're showing in here is the um, power consumption of the Ambed OS. Uh, so at the moment, the watch is uh, basically being a watch and it has also Bluetooth support. So this uh, is power consumption right here. So 0 0.02 milliwatts. What is that? Yeah. So what? So it's it uses low. it uses around. 70 microamps, 70, 80 microamps, and that's with the uh, actually animations. So every minute, we actually uh, do the animation of changing the changing the minute. So that actually uses quite a bit of power. Uh, and even with this and Bluetooth on, the uh, yeah. the watch the watch is still using around 70, 70 microamps. So it's so the, the battery lifetime, what we expect for it, the initial assumptions are around two months. Two months battery life? Yeah. With, uh, uh, this, with, awesome, with this Bluetooth 4.1? 4. 4. 4. 4. So 4. it's Bluetooth uh, low energy. Yeah, VTLE. What is this battery capacity? So battery is 160 milliamp hour. Just 160 milliamps, two months of battery life. Yeah. So why isn't everybody making this yet? Is it only a reference design? It's only a reference design. It depends what you actually want to achieve. So if you would like to have a nice animations and an old color screen, then you still have to use the application processing. Yeah, but uh, uh, memory LCD also has color. It has color, yeah, but it's not probably as nice and high end. Let's see some UI a little bit more. Yeah. So basically, you can go and there's a heart rate monitor. We don't have a heart rate monitor. Just we have UI. A, yes, we have a, We don't have a heart rate monitor built in. We had one demo where the heart rate monitor was connected to Bluetooth, so you could wear it. Okay. So it's Bluetooth to some different uh, peripherals. It could be maybe Bluetooth headphones, uh, headset, or something, and then Bluetooth to the phone, right? Yes. That's the yes. main function. Is exactly. connecting so with the phone. You can get, you can get notifications. Did you already make the Android app for the phone? We have one. Yes, I was just trying to connect it. But... Okay. All right. So, uh, how do you make this decision? What reference design to make? Who, who makes that decision? So the decision was made a long time ago, and the project has been running for quite some time, even it started before I joined the company. Um, what do you do? So I work on the hardware of the watch. So I actually uh, work on the schematics and the, the PCB board. That's fun, no? It is fun, yeah. And we have another guy here, Steve, who's hey. working on the mechanics of the watch. You work on the mechanics? So, yep. so what kind of mechanics are you doing in there? Um, well, we turn the industrial design 
yeah. into something manufactural. So my role was taking the design and turning it, taking it into individual parts, getting it all assemblable and putting it together. So how can you do that? Do you have experience in doing that? Yeah, so I have experience in product design. Uh, what kind of products you were doing before? Uh, I was working in robotics before this. All right, so is ARM going to mass manufacture this? I'm joking. <laughs> how, uh, how is this different from a Pebble? Um, so the difference really is that we are not mass manufacturing it. This was an experiment, yeah. and it was an experiment to learn about how we develop devices like this to so influence our reference design. Um, we wanted to learn how to build low power systems yeah. and how to architect our uh, our devices um, so, so that they would be low power. So it looks really good. So um, what is Embed OS? Is it uh, Linux? It's not Linux. No. It's not Linux, it's but the is it operating similar system no? for Cortex M class. But uh, so how much can it do? You can do quite a bit. Uh, so in terms of in terms of the, it's an operating system for microcontrollers, and the one of the main features is security of it as well. So it's pre-tied into M class processes. So uh, people can take this and do lots of uh, real things. And they can take your, is it open design or what? Yes, it's an open design. It will be released uh, the first quarter next year, 2016. So you will release an open smartwatch design that any manufacturer can take and start doing crazy things with? Yeah, we're, so we're talking basic wearables here. So m class wearables um, and any manufacturer can take parts of the design, all of the design, reuse it how they would like to get started building devices with Embed OS. So it's got to be fun, though, to make designs for hardware that can be uh, yeah, mass manufactured and open yeah. and get acceleration into the industry so people will use uh, memory LCD. Yeah. How about e-ink? Is there a consideration about e-ink also? It can work too, potentially? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be different displays, people can change stuff, exactly. modular a little bit, or... Mm -hmm. And uh, the software would be improved for this because this is not the same embed as the other embeds, no? Or is it the same embed? It's the embed mean? OS. It's just the same. So there might be subsets of embed OS. There might be like smaller, like some of the features might be cut off. So for example, on the watch, we have yeah. on the main processor, on the main processor, we are running embed OS, but we are also running embed OS on the on the Bluetooth chip. But it's just a subset of embed OS. So there's a different embed OS on the Bluetooth chip than in the. Yeah. <laughs> so in embed OS, you're supposed to sort of pick yeah. pick what features you'd like to use. And if you don't want to use something, then well, it won't be compiled in. Nice. But uh, if you want to do a smartwatch that has more and more stuff, yeah. then you would take embed OS and just increase the size of it and so add in terms of in terms of this reference design what we have we have a big subset of features we have various radios we have various sensors and if you'd like to pick it up and build it your own you're free to do it once it's it's uh, uh, open source and in actually the design of the watch if you wouldn't like to use so you can still make the same exact watch but if you don't want to use just some of the subset of the features, let's say you want to use the main processor and the BLE, then you just use these two. And everything else, because it's on a separate sort of subsystem, you can just power gate it and it won't be using much power, it's just a leakage. So uh, let's look at the watch again. Uh, so what if somebody wants to do a more advanced uh, user interface and uh, have more stuff? How would they do it? So in terms of more advanced user interface, yes, you are free to do it as long as you do it yourself. How does it work? Is it like uh, you install some kind of home replacement that they have on Android or how does it work to do more UI stuff? So in terms of more UI, you probably would have to, I, honestly, I have no idea if you can have to write your own libraries for it. Yeah. Probably you would. There is, uh, and then that increases the memory space on the device oh, and yeah, stuff. Of course. So as long as you take it into your own hands, you would use a subset of Embed OS, and then you start adding your own stuff to it. Yeah. Then you would. That, it depends on you how, how you do your own programming. What do you do when you click on battery? What does it do? So the battery, it's uh, what it has. It uh, has a fuel gauge inside. You have eight weeks battery life left. Yeah. Awesome. Is it, it's not constantly uh, on Bluetooth connection, right? It it's mostly is. So not this one. This one is mostly on Bluetooth connection. And what do you do with the version 2? You say there's a version 2. So in version 2 we have uh, some of the components have changed. The NFC has changed. 
uh, the Ax the sensor has been uh, upgraded from six axes to nine axes. Um, Bluetooth is still the same. Uh, the coprocessor of the fingerprint sensor has been moved from the main board onto a smaller board of the fingerprint sensor. Uh, so smaller tweaks. Does that mean you went from two months battery life to four months, or no, no, no? no? It's still the same. It's still the same. Still the same. Not it's more power same. consumption. No, not no, less. no, not less, not more. Uh, right. The only thing is additional features. We've added quite a few power gates. Is it possibly potentially cheaper to manufacture the next version because it's more optimal? Not Better? really. No. No, no, no. It's still still the same board. So we actually have like eight layer board in here, which is rigid flex. Right. Um, yeah. It's still still manufacturing process. What's the what's potentially the price to manuf mass manufacture this? We haven't looked into that yet. You haven't looked into that. Can no. I you, you, can, you can ask. Of course, you can ask. Yeah. Yes. Hey, can I ask you one? Can I ask you one thing? What was the mass manufacturer price? You think? for mass, mass production of this one? It's difficult to calculate that because it depends on the volume of the device and we're not building large volumes. If somebody's making a million units. Of these exact devices? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would change significantly if you're building a million and I don't know how much that would cost. Less than 50? I have no idea. Okay. okay. At the moment we're doing PCBs in the UK. It's a bit more expensive. As soon as you wanted to do more, you'd probably outsource it somewhere else. But the, the ARM Cortex M3 and the M0 and the M4, that's not very expensive. Oh yeah. It's yeah. possible to get it's, them for... It's, it's, yeah, it's cheap. The only thing at the moment is PCB manufacture is expensive because it's a... Custom, it's special. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. The display is hopefully not too much yeah. and this capacitive touch... Yeah, that's just a PCB. Side. Yeah. That's actually just a flexible PCB. Flexible? Yes. Let's see it again. What do you mean flexible? So the PCB inside uh, is... Yeah. yeah. So the PCB... So the, the PCB... This is where the LCD connects. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And that's where the... Uh, another PCB connect. This is where the flexible PCB connects. Okay. Oh, sorry. One second. I just yeah, need to, to focus. Okay, right here. So you say uh, the PCB connects? The PCB well? connects in here. Yeah. And what it is actually is a flexible PCB that goes around in here and in here. So what I will do is we have four capacitive buttons which we use as a slider. Yeah. And we have another three capacitive buttons here. The one we just use in the middle one as a back button. So it's flexible, that means it goes in the shape of it, your it wrist goes a little bit? Shape, so it goes underneath the glass panels in here. Wow. Okay, but uh, it doesn't shape with your wrist or something? No, no, no. 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 But it's, it's just it's, like it's, this? Okay. It's, yeah, it's mounted in place. And it's not going to break? It's not going to break. But you're not wearing it every day right now? We're not it's, wearing it's every day. It's a bit day. fragile. We, there's of not, course, there's yes, not many. Yes, every, with, every, with every design, you see some flaws with manufacturing. Yeah. So let's say with straps, they might be, get di might be getting dirty a bit. But you take but, this in mass production, then uh, people need to test their everything. Of course, a lot. if we were taking it to mass production, mass production, then we would, there would be a bit more quality testing as well. All right, cool. So that's awesome. Reference designs for smartwatch and the arm embed. Yeah.